Hi everyone, I'm excited to share another pretty dress pattern with you today. I'm sewing the Diana button down dress by fabricsstore.com. This pattern is offered free on their site. I'll leave the link below so you can download it and sew along with me today. There are a lot of little details which require some focus and some finesse. What makes this pattern special to me are the pleats all along the waistband, the buttons from top to bottom, and of course, the inseam pockets. I hope you sew it too. Let's get started. You will need two front pieces mirrored, one back piece cut on the fold, two front skirts mirrored, and one back skirt cut on the fold, two sets of pockets mirrored, two front neck facings mirrored, and two mirrored of interfacing, one back neck facing cut on the fold, and one cut on the fold of interfacing, two button bands cut on the fold. This isn't in the instructions, but I also cut button bands out of interfacing, measuring the same length, but half the width. This will give some extra stability to the material when I go to add the buttons and buttonholes. And 10 small buttons. Mine are about half inch. Fuse your interfacings to the wrong sides of your facings. And if you're adding interfacing to your button bands, fuse those now too. Place your facings right sides together and pin the shoulder seams. Sew at a 3 8 seam allowance and press them open. Serge the outer edges of your facing. I've gone ahead and surged the upper arm seams of both my front and back pieces, and now it's time to attach them. So place your front and back pieces right sides together and pin the upper arm seams. Sew with the 3 8 inch seam allowance and press them open. With right sides together, pin your facing to the neckline. Match your shoulder seams and center backs. Sew your neckline with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now that my facing is sewn to the neckline, I'm going to use pinking shears to trim my seams and clip my curves. Now we'll turn our facing to the inside and give it a good press. Now that my neckline is pressed, I'm going to top stitch around my neckline very close to the seam. You can add some pins to the neckline and the facing just so things don't shift around on you as you top stitch. I've left these center flaps of my facing open and raw. They'll be enclosed later in our button band. I've gone ahead and surged my side seams separately. Now it's time to pin, sew, and press them open. Now we're ready to prepare the cuffs. There is no separate cuff piece for this pattern. They're built into the sleeves. Now we're going to do a few steps of folding, pressing, sewing, and folding again, and we'll have some lovely built-in cuffs. Press both sleeve hems 3 8 inch to the wrong side. With your pressed 3 8 seam tucked under, fold it again 2 and a half inches and press. Now take it to your machine and sew all around your inner fold with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Now that I've finished sewing my cuffs down, we're going to fold it one more time in half, just over our stitching line. Then pin it in place at the shoulder and underarm seams and stitch inside your shoulder and underarm seams just on the cuff area to keep everything nicely folded in place. I'm going to stitch in the ditch of my shoulder and underarm seams 
so that my cuff always will keep this fold. You should probably increase your stitch length because this cuff is now pretty thick. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter stitch. I've put my bodice aside and now it's time to start our skirt portion. Let's do a little bit of serging first. Take your front and back skirt pieces and serge all four side seams separately. And take your four pockets and serge all the way around the entire pocket for all four pockets. Now place your pocket pieces right sides together and pin all around the rounded edges. Now take them to your machine and sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, starting and stopping 3 8 inches from the edges. If it makes it easier for you, you can mark your start and stop points with chalk. This way, the flaps on the edges of our pockets are ready to be sewn to our skirt seams. With the wrong sides of your skirt facing you, place your pockets on the skirt panels close to the top of the skirt. Make a marking two inches down from the top of the skirt on the serged side. This is where we'll pin the top of our pockets. Pin the pocket piece that's facing you to the side of the skirt starting from where you marked. Make sure not to pin the pocket piece that's underneath and pin in place. Do this for both pockets. Now take it to your machine and sew that pocket seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure that you're not catching this under pocket area. Now that your pockets are sewn to your front skirt panels, let's attach the remaining pocket piece to the back skirt panel. With the right side of your back skirt panel, mark your 2 inch point again and match this right side to the right side of your remaining pocket piece and pin. Stitch with a 3 8 seam allowance, making sure not to catch any material underneath, just the pocket and the back skirt panel. Repeat these steps for the other side. Now we're ready to complete the side seams. Pin your side seams from the top of your skirt to the top of your pocket, and from the bottom of your pocket to the bottom of your skirt. Sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, starting from the top of your skirt to the top of your pocket, back stitching at both ends, and from the bottom of your pocket to the bottom of your skirt, back stitching at both ends. Repeat the same steps for your other side seam. I gave it a good press, and this is what my pocket looks like from the outside. Now we can hem the bottom of our skirt, folding the hem a half inch and a half inch again, rolling it over on itself, and then sewing close to this inner fold. We're almost ready to attach our skirt to the bodice. Before I do, I'm going to pin my pleats in place. Using my pattern piece, I'm going to mark the notches for my pleats. Now I'm going to fold the material from notch to notch to create three pleats on my front skirt. Do the same steps for your other front panel. I 
as well as for the pleats on your back skirt. Once you've pinned all your pleats, you can attach your bodice to your skirt portion. Place your bodice on your skirt right sides together, matching side seams, center backs, and center fronts, and pin or clip. Now sew your bodice to your skirt using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. End serge. Fold your button band in half widthwise and press. And then fold and press the two long edges 3 8 inch. Also press the short edges about 3 8 inch. Do this for both button bands. Now that our button bands are pressed, it's time to attach them to the dress. Only a quarter inch of our center fronts will enter into the button bands and be stitched down. So if it helps, you can draw a line with chalk or a marking pen a quarter inch from your center fronts. This way you know where to stop your overlap. Pin all the way down. Now that it's pinned, I'm going to sew close to the edge of my button bands all the way around the button band on both sides. Make sure that as you're sewing, you're also catching the underside of your button band. Do this for the button bands on your right and left side. Now all that's left is to sew our buttonholes and attach our buttons. I'm sewing my buttonholes to the right button band. I've spaced my buttons about two and three fourths inches apart from each other. I marked my placements with chalk. Now I'm ready to take it to my machine. I finished sewing my buttonholes and opened them up. And now I've pinned together my button bands, the left overlapping the right, so that I can mark where my buttons need to go. I'm just using a pin and finding the center of my left buttonhole and pinning the right buttonhole, and that's where my button will go right in that spot in the center of the right button band. Now when I unpin my band, I'm just left with the pins on the right side indicating where to place my buttons in the middle of the band. Sew on your buttons and you're all done. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other sew along videos for more beautiful pieces to create. I'll see you next time.